Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Judson's Racing Network. And finally, it's been months, but we finally have regular interviews back. I know you guys have all been dying to see them because we've just been stuck with the live podcast once a week. But today we are joined by a very special guest. We are joined by driver of the number 47 car for Mike Harmon Racing, Kyle Weatherman. So, Kyle, how are you doing tonight? Good, good. I appreciate you having me on. And, yeah, there's definitely a lot going on with, with this paint schemes that we've been running, and it's really cool to kind of represent the law enforcement uh, that we've got on our cars. And it's, uh, it's really cool to, to have them and represent them. Obviously, there's a lot going on in the world right now and to uh, stand for, for what uh, I believe in. And obviously, everything they do for us is, is really cool. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So um, for the people who don't know, Kyle, you know, he, he drives in the uh, NASCAR Xfinity Series for Mike Harmon Racing. Lately, you've been running the back, back the blue car. Um, that debuted at Homestead Miami Speedway um, a couple months ago. So can you tell us a little bit about that car? Yeah, yeah. So that's um, that's obviously one that's – and actually both of them. We're actually running uh, another one this weekend in Indy for Stand for the Flag, which obviously is, is another one that we represent and we, uh, you know, stand for. But uh, the back, the blue one, is, is really close to me. Um, just for, you know, everything that's going on, obviously, um, you know, kind of throughout the world uh, and, you know, kind of the – I guess you can say image that, that they have right now um, is something that, uh, you know, I feel like needed to kind of bring awareness to, um, you know, kind of that situation, you know, so um, and not all cops are bad, you know, in, in, in reality, obviously, um, there's a few things that have kind of went on in the past couple of months that, um, you know, shouldn't have happened or, or I don't agree with as well. Um, but on the other hand, I definitely don't agree with, uh, you know, bringing down our law enforcement and stuff like that, you know, kind of with that, you know, and, and kind of given, um, I guess you can say an image per se, um, and that, um, that category, you know, so, um, yeah, obviously we're really supportive of our, all our enforcement and everything that they do, whether it's, uh, you know, firefighters, whether it's police officers, um, you know, just any first responder, you know, is, is someone that I want to stick up for and stand for, um, you know, for, you know, any case that, you know, I need them most, you know, so for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And it's great. Thing you're doing too with the back of the blue car and supporting um, our uh, first responders and cops and stuff, I guess. Not really, but um, my uncle's a firefighter, so uh, I definitely like what you're doing. Uh, I always, yeah. I, I don't pick favorites, but you know, I cheer for everyone, so that means I do cheer for you on track in the back of the blue car. So it's great that you're doing this. And um, so this year, um, uh, three or four weeks ago at Kentucky, uh, they had the double header weekend. You uh, scored your first ever top 10 finish in the NASCAR Xfinity Series uh, with Mike Harmon Racing, and you scored Mike Harmon Racing first top 10 in the NASCAR Xfinity Series with an eighth-place finish there at Kentucky in the first race. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah that was incredible. That was incredible. Uh, and the cool part is we actually, um, you know, sometimes you can uh, luck into a finish or, or um, you know, a lot of cars wreck, and you can get a good finish that way sometimes. Uh, you know, we were really competitive all day. We ran between, you know, 10th to 15th all day, um, put ourselves in a good position there at that last restart. I think we restarted 10th, I think, or I think, I think it was actually 12th. We restarted 12th with uh, two to go or three to go. And um, we had a really good short run car. So obviously, you know, three to go, that's, uh, you know, it's kind of in our favor as well. And, uh, you know, we ended up coming across start finish line eight. So um, incredible day. Uh, it was amazing. Uh, it was really cool to kind of showcase what, um, myself as a driver can do, um, but, you know, also kind of showcase what Mike Harmon's team is, is capable of doing as well. So, um, you know, definitely need to kind of, um, you know, get more finishes like that to kind of bring more attention to, uh, you know, our team and, and myself. And, you know, it definitely, definitely helped that day. And, and, uh, like I said, we're just building and getting better each week. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like your back to blue cars brought a lot of attention to you as well. Um, yeah. kind of putting your name out there too. So, and especially with that top 10 finish too. So uh, what you've scored the top 10 finish um, a few weeks ago. So what are some other goals you have for the rest of the season in the NASCAR Xfinity series? Yeah, hopefully, obviously just do as many races as I can. I don't have a set schedule really uh, for how many races or what race I'm racing, but um, you know, luckily uh, we do have some sponsorship that's been backing us and supporting us, uh, which helps, um, you know, obviously that gets us, gets us in the car, but, uh, no, just representing the brand and the image that we have is definitely something that I want to continue doing, uh, you know, so to find sponsors that, you know, kind of want to keep on building on that and, and keep the image and brand that we've got going and, um, and stuff like that. But, you know, just, uh, um, you know, I, I never really, I, I do set high expectations and obviously definitely over them by finishing eighth and stuff like that. 
uh, you know, so that's, that's what I, like, I, I enjoy doing and like doing. Obviously, I always want to over succeed and, and try to do better than, quote unquote, what the, the um, car is supposed to do. Um, but on the other hand, you know, obviously finishing races and, and stuff of that's important too. So, you know, um, really just trying to, you know, obviously get as many opportunities for the rest of the year to, to get in cars, whether it's a cup car, whether it's an Xfinity car, truck, whatever. And, uh, you know, obviously make the most of that. But, you know, on the other hand, kind of create and, and keep going uh, with this image of, of back to blue and, and, you know, standing for the flag and stuff like that, which I feel like is, is really needed in our, uh, you know, just, just everywhere right now, honestly. Yeah. And you've, you've been doing really well this season in the 10 starts you've made with uh, three top 10 finishes, one coming, uh, including the Kentucky race. And then you also got a top 15 finish with a 15th place at the um, Indianapolis road course too. That was kind of an even playing field with everyone out there. So, uh, I think it's pretty cool that they went there and raced there and uh, you got to score top 15. Yeah, um, it was really so, fun. Really fun track. Yeah. Uh, so luckily, you know, uh, a lot of guys who were in the XP series weren't in the cup race or else they'd probably be driving backwards the whole time. So, <laughs> uh, but uh, one question, I've always written this down before I do interviews. Like, I really want to ask this question, but I never get around to asking it during the interviews. How do you prepare for a NASCAR race? It's hard. I mean, especially, uh, especially the hot ones, you know, you know Indy was pretty bad. Uh, Road America's not going to be too bad. I mean, I've looked at the weather. It's going to be hot, um, but Daytona is going to be pretty hot. So definitely uh, starting to um, just like anything. And I've always told myself um, there's a lot of mental stuff that goes into it. Uh, so I guess mentally preparing for it, first of all. Uh, and second of all, just hydrating. Hydrating is really important. Obviously um, I sweat more than other drivers, I think. So, um, you know, right now uh, I've been trying to kind of stay consistent on, on drinking a gallon to a gallon and a half of water a day, uh, just keeping my fluids up. Uh, I've never been, um, you know, I, I really don't, you know, kind of go anything other direction besides water. So I just, you know, try to drink as much water as I can. And, um, you know, it, that, that's the most important thing is just hydrating and, and you know, kind of keeping uh, your hydration up because that's, um, as a driver being, you know, at Daytona, it's probably going to be 140 degrees inside that car. So you're going to be sweating a lot. And, um, you know, obviously a lot goes through, um, you know, a mental state as well, you know, cause the races are long, it's that hot in there, you know, so you're getting mentally drained, you're getting physically drained with obviously all your, you know, your body, you know, body temperature going up and some of that. So, um, other than, you know, obviously just, um, like I said, hydrating a lot and then, you know, just trying to, uh, exercise as much as you can to kind of, um, do sports or, or activities around that can kind of, uh, spike your heart rate and, and get the heart rate up and stuff of that. But, uh, you know, really other than, uh, you know, just kind of being prepared for it uh, in a sense of, of mentally and physically, um, you know, those are really the, the two biggest things to do. Yeah, and so one thing, too, I know a lot of drivers have, probably have different answers for this, but do you eat any food before the race or do you just fast? Uh, so that's, that's a good question. So some drivers do. Um, I normally try to um, not, not the day – I'm normally like two days before I'll try to, you know – um, eat a lot of carbs and stuff like that. Um, and the day, the day before the race, um, kind of the same thing. Uh, but the race day, I try to eat really clean. I, I'm a little bit different than, than most drivers. I think my stomach gets kind of upset sometimes. Uh, uh Oh, seems like we lost them. why just for some reason whenever I, I well you know kind of upset me in a way for sure okay so sorry about that there uh, I think we lost you for a second there so if you could just uh, um, say what you're saying again okay uh, yeah so I mean the biggest thing for me um, you know I'm a little bit different than most drivers um, I, I try not to eat as many carbs during race day it just kind of upsets my stomach stuff like that during the race uh, you know, so kind of just eat pretty clean on race day, but, um, you know, the days before I'll kind of try to get my carbon take up just to kind of, um, you know, have my body ready for, for race day. Yeah. So, um, what, what has been your biggest heartbreak in racing of all time out of your career? All time. Um, man, there's a few, I mean, I'm not even going to lie. I mean, obviously the Kentucky one, uh, was, was pretty, um, you know, it, it, uh, it got to me a little bit, obviously finishing eighth the first day. Uh, and then, you know, second day I, I made a mistake on, on my end as a driver and obviously the second day didn't go as well. So, um, you know, that, that was, a you know, I guess, um, and, and the, the, I guess the way you can kind of look at it, it was kind of like a high to a low really quick. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, the day before, 
uh, was probably the, the best moment of my racing career, obviously with, with, uh, you know, the support that I've got going on with, with the paint schemes that we've been running, uh, and then finishing eighth with, with that car, with my, um, you know, my first top 10 in the NASCAR series, um, obviously just, just all around an incredible day. Uh, and then, you know, the next day was, was the complete opposite, you know? So, uh, you know, that, that's the one that sticks to me the most right now, because it was obviously the most recent, um, you know, and unfortunately there's probably been a handful of other ones, but, um, you know, that, that's another thing with racing. Um, it's going to be up and down, uh, you know, throughout your whole career. Um, and you just can't, you can't let it really bring you down and you can't let it affect you, you know, in your, your mental state, um, or, or anything, you know, it's, it's a pretty up and down sport. So you've got to, uh, learn pretty quickly that, uh, it's going to be a roller coaster ride. And you've just got to learn to, um, um, whether it's learn from your mistakes, adapt to the what circumstance or situation that you're in. Uh, and, and do the best you can. So that's all you can do, obviously. Um, and, and like, like example for, from Kentucky, obviously it's a mistake that I made. I've got to learn from it uh, and not do it again. And then, uh, you know, just, uh, I can't let it affect me from, you know, from here on out, you know, basically kind of got to forget about it, you know, kind of thing. But, uh, you know, yeah, like I said, definitely just, um, and like I said, I kind of live by it. Um, you know, it's a, there's a lot of, of mental stuff that goes on to whether it's life in general or, or racing, um, you know, throughout the race, you know, there's a lot of mental stuff that you got to prepare for. And, um, you know, you can't, uh, you can't let stuff affect you. Yeah. So other than, you know, biggest heartbreaker, what has been your favorite moment in uh, your racing career that doesn't include the eighth place finish at Kentucky? Yeah, well, obviously that, that was, like I said, that's the first one. Um, but you know, just the biggest thing, and I used to do it a lot was race with my family. Uh, and I still try to keep it, you know, like that. So, you know, when I was racing with, with my dad and my brother back, uh, when I was eight, nine, 10, 11 years old was, was incredible. Uh, you know, those are the moments that I guess, you know, right now I miss the most, uh, you know, cause you know, we're, we're not able to do that right now, but, uh, just, it, it was really fun thinking back about, uh, back by, uh, you know, we raced in legend cars and, and go-karts and bandoleros and stuff like that, uh, to do it with my dad and my family and, and my brother. Uh, you know, those were, those are really incredible moments as well. Yeah, definitely. It's it, NASCAR and racing in general is definitely a family sport. Absolutely. So, um, this is this is uh, an interesting thing I found on your Wikipedia page. I didn't know about this before, but um, apparently, when you were 17 years old, you moved um, with Chris Busher, the 2015 Xfinity Series champion and current Cup Series driver, to North Carolina. So, what was that like, and how big of an impact has he had on your racing career? Yeah, yeah. Him and David Reagan have have been really good to me. Um, they're they're like family, and, and you're right, exactly right. Um, this big, uh, you know, the racing industry is, is a big family in a way, you know, and it's, it's incredible to be in it. Uh, yeah. So David, uh, David, actually, uh, David Reagan's father, Ken Reagan, uh, actually got me started in racing. So that's how, uh, kind of this whole situation started with racing. Um, and then Chris Busher is, um, when I was 12 year old, 12 years old, uh, I actually took over his place and the legend cars that he used to race and the crew chief that he used to work with. When I was 12 years old, I took over all his stuff. So um, that, that's how that relationship built, um, you know, through that. And also Chris was pretty close with David as well. So that's kind of how that path really started. But, um, you know, yeah, David Reagan and Chris Busher have been a really big impact on my lives, uh, you know, whether, whether it's personally or on the racetrack. You know, they're, they're big helps on, on both sides. And, uh, yeah, so I actually moved out here um, in 2000. Uh, I believe it – I think you said 17. I believe that is correct. Um, and, uh, moved in with actually, uh, Chris and Emma, his girlfriend, now wife, uh, and lived with them for a year until my mom and sister could move down. So, um, no, yeah, they've been, they've been a really big help, uh, really, you know, really cool to have a support base like those two. And, uh, it's incredible to kind of, you know, be able to learn from them and, and kind of ask questions whenever I can from, from both of them. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, with David Reagan and Ken Reagan, Ken Reagan's been racing, such a long time, you know, really great on short tracks too. Yep. And then you yep. got Chris Busher who went, won the next mini series championship and is currently racing in the cup series. So definitely big help. So did they get you into racing or was it your family? Uh, my dad, my dad raced a little bit, uh, whether it was go karts some of that, nothing um, at the professional level. Um, my dad's always been into racing, always liked racing, went to races to watch and stuff like that. But um, you no, know, my dad's best friend, um, is Brian Maine and Brian Maine is related to David Reagan. So, um, just kind of a, a connection type thing. Um, but Ken Reagan was the one, uh, Brian Maine, uh, and Ken Reagan, which Brian's, um, you know, Ken's cousin, uh, or David's cousin, those, that's how it started, you know? So, 
um, we actually ended up getting a Bandolero, which Ken Reagan used to own US Legend Cars, uh, which is the Bandoleros and Legend Cars. Um, and that, that's how it all started, you know. So from, from that day on, uh, you know, we really, I guess, from that day on, we were hooked, hooked in the racing industry. And, and it's, uh, you know, something that I'll never, never regret. Or it, it was just uh, an awesome opportunity to get, get started in that and, and get rolling like that. Yeah, definitely. And you, you, you started competing in high levels of racing from a pretty young age. You know, you started competing in the ARCA series when you were only, what, 15 or 16? So, yeah, 15. Yeah, so you've done pretty well, so. And, you know, you scored an ARCA win, too. Rack up uh, 25 top 10 finishes, or I think top five. Um, I have my phone with me to check. So, But we'll go ahead and uh, wrap things up here with the fan question presented by yeah. my brother, Keelan O'Neill. If you were stranded on an island with one, and you can only bring one other person, which driver would it be? Oh, which driver would it be? Ah, man, that'd be hard because I just named two that have helped me out a lot. Um, Ah, that's, that's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, I, I would say Chris, I've got the best relationship with Chris. Um, but there, there's a handful of drivers. Like I said, Chris, uh, David, um, Carl Edwards is actually you know, pretty close to Missouri where I'm from. So uh, there's been a handful of drivers that have helped me. Uh, you know, so I, I would probably say Chris, but, uh, you know, it, um, it, it would be, it'd be a, a hard pick for sure. Yeah, definitely. So I guess, I guess I got to say this since I'm interviewing you right now, but I'd probably pick you, Kyle. You know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Do you have any survival skills at all? Man, we figured out. We figured out. <laughs> I don't. Uh, I haven't. Uh, haven't had to try to use any of them yet. But we could figure something out. That's for sure. Yeah. So if you also with this question, if you can only bring one item with you, what item would that be? Ooh. Man, you're picking hard ones. Hard ones. Man, I don't know if I want to. I don't know if I want to bring my phone so I could call my family members and stuff of like that, or if I'd want to bring a cheeseburger because I'd be hungry. <laughs> hey, I'd, I'd probably bring a 24 pack of cheeseburgers. There you, you know, go. That'd, that'd, probably, so. that'd probably be a better option instead of just one. We bring 24 of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, personally, if I had to choose one item, uh, my first option would be 24 pack of burritos. I'm more of a burrito man, but um, okay. Uh, you know, uh, for, for survival. Cause I know that probably only lasts me like a couple of days. Um, so I'd probably say something like maybe a machete. I don't know. Yeah. Something. Cause yeah. I mean, I'm sure I wouldn't say something like, you know, a pan or a pot or something. Cause I feel like, you know, I can just get a fish or something, catch a fish, stick it through a stick and just put it over a fire. So yeah, yeah. I just kind of be wasting it. So I'd probably have to go with a machete because I feel like I could cut through things and, you know, throw it at that's probably, or something. That's probably, yeah, that's probably a pretty good, uh, pretty good pick there for sure. Yeah. So thank you so much, Kyle, for joining. And thank you, everyone sure. who tuned in. Um, so if you haven't already, please make sure to like and subscribe to Justin's Racing Network and follow Kyle on all social media pages, too. I, I Probably you have most of them. So what, what's yep. your username on there? Uh, actually, Kyle Weatherman on all of them, and then my racing uh, Facebook page is Kyle Weatherman Racing. So, yeah, definitely, definitely check them out, and uh, appreciate you having me on. Yeah, definitely. So make sure to go check Kyle out and subscribe to me as well because, you know, we just reached 230 subscribers, so not a lot, but it's definitely a lot for this Gotta little start channel. Somewhere. Yeah, everyone subscribe for sure. It'd be awesome. Yeah. So thank you so much again, Kyle, for joining. We'll see you next time on Justin's Racing Network.